morning dear students today our section is starting with the topic parasitic adaptations of helminths what are this helminths the helminths are worm like parasites that means they are worm as well as they are parasites what are the examples examples all the uh, organisms that is coming under phylum nematodes and platy helminths they are all helminths they are worm like parasites today in this section we are going to see the parasitic adaptations of this helminths all the adaptations we are uh, explaining under four headings they are morphological adaptations physiological adaptations life cycle adaptations and the immunological adaptation so let's have a uh, Uh, look um, um, through all the adaptations uh, for the parasitic mode of life. All the adaptations is broadly classified under uh, four main heads: morphological adaptations, physiological adaptations, life cycle adaptations, and immunological adaptations. And under morphological adaptations, there is again another. uh two type of adaptations like regeneration or loss of organs or systems then new attainment uh, and under uh, physiological adaptations there are a few different types of adaptations like intracellular digestion related adaptation osmoregulation related adaptation anaerobic respiration related adaptation anti enzyme uh, production uh, like uh, adaptation vast reproduction that related adaptations then under uh, life cycle adaptation there is uh, so many other modes of adaptations like increase in reproductive potential uh, infection of secondary and tertiary host uh, by that we some sort of adaptations then regulation of infection uh, by the host and also regulation of the adult parasite again by the host then last one immunological adaptations that includes incompatibility resistance of the host uh, end of virulence and mutual help that all things we are going to learn in this section okay first two morphological adaptations uh, morphological um, and also one more thing for learning all these adaptations and its sub uh, headings have created a code that is uh, mentioning in another channel and i said sub channel of rani zoology classroom and i will give the link of the channel in the description box so those who are uh, interested to watch then uh, please go and watch that video too so first we are starting with the morphological adaptations no and under that heading first type of adaptation is degeneration or loss of organs or systems some organs or some systems are losing for uh, having a good parasitic mode of life Uh, that is especially in the case of endoparasitic means the, those parasites that live inside the body of host uh, they Uh, lose or uh, they more, um, simplify their unused organs or parts for uh, supporting their parasitic mode of life then which are those adaptations that we are going to see one by one regeneration or simple modifications all those are uh, changes are happening to which all aspects first regarding the size size wise uh all the endoparasites they are all very small when compared with the free living relatives and also they have high rate of egg production so that is size wise they are small and then coming to shape most of the parasites endoparasites they are doso ventrally flattened that is uh, i think it is known to you doso ventrally flatten means what and uh, because of that property they can cling they can strongly attached on to the host 
and in the case of flyers flyers means they are uh, flightless uh, um, parasite parasite that uh, dwell in the body of mammals and the birds one such fly picture is shown here coming to its case uh, its body is not dorsoventrally instead it is laterally flattened uh, what is the use of that uh, adapt that modification because of that modification it can easily escape through the haze of these mammals and birds and in the uh, case of nematodes they didn't have any such morphological specializations then next next uh, aspect I, uh, is locomotor organs uh, with regard to that what modification or what simplification is happening locomotor organs uh, usually absent in the case of endoparasitic uh, as it does inside the body of course it doesn't need uh, too much structures for uh, for uh, that ease ease means free movement uh, so uh, that's why uh, locomotor structures organs are totally absent and in the case of ectoparasites those parasites which are, that are living outside the host they have some sort of structures uh, to give some free movement okay uh, and in the case of uh, some endoparasites cilia are totally absent that also uh, is a clear indication of the same fact uh, as they are all endoparasites they uh, they didn't need they sorry they do not need any uh, cilia for locomotion then next thing is sense organ sense organs regarding with regard to that uh, feature word modification uh, in the case of uh, parasite especially endoparasites their central nervous system and sense organs sense organs both are highly reduced so that's why again a simplification then next one is alimentation alimentation is relating is regarding with the alimentary canal with regard to alimentary canal what modification in the case of endoparasite some endoparasite uh, this is one endoparasite uh, they are absorbing in nutrients through its general body surface in the case of that one that uh, gut is totally reduced because as it is absorbing uh, the digested nutrients from the host body, it doesn't need a gut. So, in that type of endoparasite, gut is totally reduced. But in the case of some other parasite that uh, used to suck blood or uh, some nourishment from the body of host, they need a gut. They possess gut. And also, their body will be wrapped uh, with a thick cuticle and also uh, they uh, as they, their gut is there they will have a pharynx and that pharynx also be extremely muscular to suck to take more fluid from the host body example is ascaris species and also the glands that present in the buccal region they can develop some anticoagulatory secretion to suck uh, uh, more blood in one bite itself so for facilitating that uh, some glands in the buccal cavity of those parasites that are that are uh, having uh, the alimentary canal they possess certain glands and that glands is uh, secreting anticoagulatory substance example hookah then next next type of adaptations under morphological adaptation is new attainment uh, some structures they are uh, developing to have a um, good or uh, uh, for a uh, comfortable parasitic mode of life that, which are those additional features they are developing First one for uh, for getting entry inside the host for that purpose which all structures are uh, there in the parasite's body. Uh, that parasite can secrete some liquid 
they will secrete some liquid and using that liquid it dissolve the host tissue to dissolve the host tissue and uh, by dissolving the host tissue it can create some microscopic passage sorry microscopic passage and through that passage that passage can enter inside the body example miracidium larvae of fasciola species uh, and also these secretions uh, helps the hooklet that person in the parasite uh, to dissolve the tissue. Example, hexac and larva. That's all regarding the structures or uh, the things or uh, the features that is helping the parasite to have an entry inside the host. Next uh, feature, new attainment uh, with regard to attachment. For attaching with the host body, they are having certain some, or they are having certain characteristics. Which are those characteristics? First one, hooks. Uh, this parasite possess certain hooks. I will show the picture. Hooks. Uh, tinea solium. Uh, we can see the hooks in two rows. This hooks, it is arranged in the form of a crown around the raw stellum in the case of tinea solium that I have shown you. And also there are some uh, other structures like acetabulum or succus that we can especially found in fasciola species. In, uh, in their case, two succus are usually present on the ventral side of the body, uh, one in anterior end and one in posterior end. In uh, of uh, of your tinea, four suckers are present. In of your tinea, four suckers are present. In some uh, cases, one apical uh, sucker also be present. In cestodes and nematodes, uh, hooks or hook-like structures also present. Uh, example: coracidium, coracidium. You can see hook-like structures. In tinea solium, again, I am going to show the rostellum. Rostellum, this one, this structure. The stretches are present uh, and uh, it contains a basal circlet. Uh, around that we can see a circlet of hooks. These are all for attachment, for attaching that parasite to the host body. They develop these stretches. Next, another uh, feature they are uh, developed in the body is a cuticle. Cuticle. Uh, cuticle was the purpose. Uh, in the case of some parasites, in uh, example, metacircaria larva, they develop a cyst membrane uh, as a protection. Uh, metacircaria larva, you can uh, see cyst here, cyst membrane. And in the case of some uh, helminths, cuticle is present. And what is the purpose? It give uh, it uh, it gives some resistance against the digestive juices that are present in the body of host. Uh, otherwise, that uh, worm get digested or destroyed because of the digestive juice present in the host. So, that cuticle protects that helmet. And in the case of those helmets, uh, they uh, that need to absorb nutrients through the body surface. They possess only a thin, thin cuticle. Uh, clear? Those helmets that need to absorb nutrients through the body surface. They possess thin cuticle, which are those type of uh, parasites. Liver flukes, blood flukes, porosis larvas, and then cystic circus. These are all having uh, thin cuticle. Then there are some others that are having uh, thick cuticle formed of chitin-like substance. Like a tapeworms, in the case of tapeworms, they possess thick cuticle. Uh, and that cuticle itself is uh, enzyme resistant, enzyme of host. Uh, uh, against that enzyme, it has resistance. It is not digestible with the uh, enzymes of the host. So, uh, in, in some helmets that are not uh, need to absorb nutrients through the body's uh, surface, general surface, they have thick cuticle. So, cuticle is giving protection, general protection. Okay, next. And also in some uh, helmets, they possess spinous, means spine type integument. Integument also means skin itself. Example, in the case of trematodes. 
then coming to another feature musculature how it is helping uh, um, under that heading new attainment uh, musculature uh, in the case of tapeworms its body is highly muscular because of that one tapeworm is structure, uh, structure we know it's high uh, it's an, a very um, lengthy type helminths means uh, yeah, elongated its body is so long no, mm, having so many problems. You have learned about this step form in your lower classes, so don't need to draw its structure here. Uh, as this body is so muscular, it can manage to uh, distribute its entire body throughout the length of the intestine of the host. So that is the use of that musculature. And uh, due to the specialized musculature, specialized musculature in the case of Ascaris, uh, it can withstand the peristalsis movement of the host gut and can maintain its position in the same place, it can maintain the position in the intestine of the host against that peristaltic movement. So that is the importance of musculature. Then uh, coming to other modification, uh, some systems get simplified. Uh, which are those uh, systems? Nervous system, it is greatly reduced in the uh, case of uh, some parasites. It becomes ladder-like. It is the characteristics of platy helmets. Ladder-like uh, nervous system. Then excretory system. Excretory system in the case of nematodes, uh, it has very little adaptation for the parasitic mode of life. So, so it is so simple. Then coming to a reproductive system, uh, there is a, uh, an elaboration means uh, in the case of parasite, uh, most of the body part uh, is uh, concerned with the reproduction. For example, in the case of cestodes, its body basically consists of a small head and neck. The rest of the portion is uh, composed of uh, so many segments containing uh, repeated gonads. Serially arranged repeated gonads. It means that this parasite uh, it is only adapted for reproduction. It is always uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to increase the population through uh, um, means um, th uh, through a uh, high rate of reproduction. Next is physiological adaptation. Uh, under this heading, we are going to see uh, what are the different types of physiological adaptations that is that are helping this parasite to have its parasitic mode of life. First is intracellular digestion. That means it digests its food materials after taking inside its cell. So, uh, in the case of this parasitic uh, worms or helminths, digestion is intracellular. It feeds the tissue elements and inflammatory exudates from the host and digests it, uh, digest it intracellularly so that is an adaptation physiological adaptation that supports its parasitic mode of life next is osmoregulation related adaptation uh, coming to the case of uh, that worm i'm drawing the worm uh, it's osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is always is keeping very means uh, slightly low or equal equal to uh, that uh, host body, host body's osmotic pressure. So, because that means uh, solute's concentration is low here and uh, um, solvent, that uh, solvent means water concentration is high. Because of that feature, uh, very easily it can absorb solute or uh, uh, nutrients from the body of host. And at the same time, it can uh, give out water, excess water to outside. So, this is an adaptation. This also helps the parasite uh, to have a good um, life inside the body of uh, that host. That is the uh, second physiological adaptation. 
uh, for its parasitic mode of life. Uh, cystos, they have a well-developed water osmoregulatory system and also their pH uh, be uh, high, uh, body pH is uh, high um, when compared with that uh, host body. Next physiological adaptation is anaerobic respiration. Mostly the respiration of uh, parasitic helminths, uh, the, it is anaerobic that means without the presence of oxygen. So in the absence of free oxygen, they uh, obtain their energy by the process of fermentation. Fermentation, fermentation of uh, glycogen, fermentation of glycogen. And um, uh, from the glycogen, uh, they break down the glucose and through it, through the glycols cycle, uh, it is again uh, broken down into carbon dioxide and fatty acids. So, uh, so as it is the mode of energy utilization, if we examine the tissue of parasite, uh, means uh, this helminth parasite, uh, its, its tissue contains more glycogen and lipid than the protein. So that is another adaptation. Then next is regarding anti-enzyme. What is this anti-enzyme? These are certain chemicals that is secreted by this uh, helminths. Against the digestive enzymes and digestive uh, so, uh, juices that is produced by the host body. Uh, uh, that Anti enzymes actually protects or uh, save that parasite from the attack of this digestive enzymes or gastric juices secreted by the host. So those worms that is unable to produce the anti enzymes will quickly digested by the host. So the last physiological adaptation is vast reproduction. It can uh, reproduce enormously in large extent. It can do its reproduction through a uh, high rate of egg production. In the case of flat worms, uh, if we examine the interior of the body, we can find that it is mostly occupied by genital organs. And, uh, and also they are hermaphrodites. And in the case of round worms, they are dioecious. And all these facts, it is supporting, it is helping or it is ensuring its fertilization because both, as they are all hermaphrodites, both types of sex cells are present in their body itself. So, it doesn't need to go and search of its mating partner or, or to, you know, that doesn't need to go and find the opposite sex cell uh, to have a fertilization. So that itself is an another assurance to have a successful fertilization and to increase the population. Uh, that is regarding uh, the vast reproduction. And also in the case of tapeworms, body consists of so a large number of proglottids. Proglottids means and each proglottid. Uh, proglottid means that segments of the tapeworm. Each proglottid contain single or double sets of genitalia and all these uh, things it is supporting a large vast vast range of uh, reproduction high rate of reproduction and also larval stages larval stages of this hell means they have the power of locomotion larval stages have the power of locomotion and because the, of that feature the, uh, it can disperse disperse its population throughout and it can uh, have a wide range of uh, distribution. So these are the physiological adaptations. Uh, next is life cycle uh, related adaptations. Uh, here it is just mentioning the life cycle pattern of some helmets. In the case of uh, turbularia, uh, its life cycle is so uh, simple um, mean, and uh, monogenic. Monogenic means, uh, monogenic in the case of trematodes, monogenic means it's like its life cycle completes in uh, one host. So that is monogenic. In digestive trematodes, uh, a larval stage also present. In cestodes, cestodes, uh, there exist three hosts, three hosts. In nematodes, uh, one or two hosts are uh, usual. So let's see what are the life cycle adaptations.
Um, here also we need to mention the uh, increase in the reproductive potential. Uh, in what all way they, it uh, again that high potential uh, potential for reproduction. So many means of asexual reproductions are there in the life cycle of these parasites like uh, fission, then budding, budding two types, exogenous and endogenous budding are there. So by that way it can increase the rate of multiplication. And also uh, it uses many hosts, many hosts are there in their life cycle. So by that way it can expand, expand its uh, uh, distribution. So that is another thing. And also um, hermaphroditism, hermaphroditism and parthenogenesis. That also assuring, assuring the um, high rate of uh, reproduction in the case of this helmets and also uh, they didn't possess any seasonal reproductive cycles it is not present in the case of helmets because of that feature its eggs and sperms are available through or it is producing throughout the year so that's also increasing the rate of reproduction and also its maturation is so rapid and extended lifespan as its lifespan is so expanded that also giving more chance to have more uh, rounds of reproduction. Uh, and also uh, in their uh, life cycle, uh, uh, so many means of asexual reproduction. I already uh, mentioned you some. Um, if we take the case of uh, some digenian um, helminths, some sporos stage are there in their life cycle that sporosis stage the stage itself is the polyembryonic stage polyembryonic right here polyembryonic stage sporosis stage are there polyembryonic means uh, thus that stage itself carry so many embryos inside and each one can develop into uh, a uh, develop into a separate parasite uh, means uh, uh, maybe a radia another stage from the sporocyte a radia stage uh, can develop and that radia stage 2 uh, is a polyembryonic stage that means Inside the radio also present so many embryo. Each one can develop into uh, a separate parasite. So uh, these all things yeah, um, uh, giving more chance to have a high rate of reproduction. Okay. Uh, so that's about uh, the first point regarding the uh, life cycle related adaptation. The next, next uh, adaptation is... Uh, uh, regarding with the uh, number of host secondary and tertiary two hosts may present in the case of the life cycle of uh, some helmets and there are some advantages because of having um, many hosts uh, the advantages are it increases the reproductive potential the same point i mentioned here also uh, means its uh, uh, distribution range will get expanded as there is so many costs um, and also it can asexually reproduce in alternative host so uh, that is an advantage and also uh, if there are two hosts if, uh, if we uh, examine if we observe that two hosts uh, if one is terrestrial and the other one is uh, aquatic then that parasite is getting that much range, geographical range for their distribution. That is another advantage. Uh, and also uh, that uh, intermediate host, if uh, suppose I uh, think that two hosts are there and this intermediate host, uh, if that intermediate host get infected by that parasite, then uh, it can channel that parasite to its definite host host very easily. Uh, why? Because that intermediate host may surely be uh, a part of its food chain, maybe uh, its food. 
so by that way uh, very easily uh, with the help of that or through that intermediate host it can reach its definite host so uh, that also an another advantage of having um, two uh, host or may, um, many host the next advantage is that most of the parasite group they prefer to have a life inside the body of host so they always cut short or reduce the extent of free living phase why uh, to avoid variable external environment so that is another advantage as having uh, as they possess so many hosts they can spend most of their life cycle inside or and in, or else they can spend a life inside the body of a host and uh, also some some, uh, some uh, adaptations uh, these parasites have uh, for uh, increasing its chance to get a ch chance to infect a host what are those adaptations um it can easily through some behavioral response it can locate favorable environment it can easily locate the favorable environment and also uh, it can respond to certain chemical stimuli given out by their host this is another adaptation and next one after infecting the intermediate host it changes the behavior of that in, uh, intermediate host by that way it increase the chance of uh, them being eaten by the final host uh, clear by changing the behavior of that intermediate host uh, it uh, increases or it make it easy for the final host to find them as their food by that way the parasite get an entry to the final host uh, very soon okay um, that's about uh, the different adaptations and also benefits benefits of having secondary and tertiary host next uh, uh, life cycle mediated life cycle related adaptation is regulation of infection by the host that means um, the infection of a parasite to that host it is regulated by that host itself how because for infecting a host that host himself need to set out some stimuli and based on that or depending that stimuli only that parasite can infect that host so this is uh, the way how the um, infection of a parasite is get regulated by the host and also in, in the case of some parasites for their egg uh, to hatch after reaching the bo body of host uh, it needs some pre digestion with the help of host enzymes and also the presence of some specific bile salts so that is helping helping that parasite to infect that host so that also uh, one regulation method and the next one is that after reaching inside the body of host uh, that uh, egg is getting correct pH temperature uh, correct redox potential partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide and that's that's why and that all pattern parameters are necessary for their egg to hatch by that way also the host is regulating the infection of the parasite next one regulation of the adult parasite by the host host is again regulating the adult parasite's life inside the host how uh, the reproduction reproduction of the parasite inside the host body it is controlled by uh, the hormonal or physiological changes that is happening inside that host so in that way host is again regulating the adult parasite while it is inside the host okay next is immunological adaptation and this one is the last type of adaptation uh, in the parasitic adaptations of helpers uh, all the vertebrates or most of the vertebrates they react to parasite by means of humoral and cell mediated uh, response immune response uh, i think that you, i think that you know that what is humoral and what is cell mediated humoral means with the help of antibodies and cell mediated means cell itself is taking the initiative to phagocytos and uh, to destroy the foreign body that is humoral and cell mediated response 
So, in the case of mammals, for developing a good immune response, it requires 9 days. So, those parasites that persist more than 9 days, that parasites also have to develop some mechanism to withstand the host immune response. Otherwise, it will destroy. So, let's see what are the strategies adopted by the parasite to withstand the immune response of the host. First one. Uh, it absorbs the host antigen. Then the host body cannot uh, distinguish or can and cannot identify that parasite. That's the first strategy. Second is antigenic variation. Antigenic variation means it modifies certain carbohydrates or, or uh, some proteins on host cell uh, suffers. By that way, uh, the it modify by that way that host cell cannot recognize that antigen. That is another uh, method. And third one, it occupies some immunologically privileged sites. Means uh, there are certain sites uh, in which whenever a foreign body enters, it will not elicit some, uh, elicit any imm uh, immune response. Example for such immunologically privileged sites are central nervous system, brain, uh, testis etc. So uh, whenever a foreign body enters any of these sites it will not uh, elicit uh, any immune response so fast. And also the, the fourth one um, it uh, disrupt whenever the parasite enters the host body it disrupt, it disrupt the host immune response. And then uh, next method is it, it uh, mimics the uh, molecular uh, nature of host cell. By that way also host cell cannot uh, recognize that foreign body, foreign parasite. And also that parasite loss or mask it suffers antigen. By that way also host cell fail to identify this parasite. These are the strategies adopted by the uh, parasite uh, to fool the immune system of the host. And also after entering the body of host, uh, that parasite and uh, uh, after entering the body of host, we can see certain, some sorts of relationship between the parasite and host, which are those relations, relations that we are going to see. First, the incompatibility. The parasite uh, stays incompatible for the host. Uh, by that way, the parasite makes the environment suit for its development and if it, can, it cannot stay as incompatible it will die. Then uh, another relation is resistance of the host. Resistance of the host means it is resisting the host. How um, parasite keep itself immature to be uh, attacked by the host inside. So by that way it resists the host defense system. It stay, it keep uh, itself immature to be attacked by the host enzyme. And also while at the same time, it, um, it increase the rate of its reproduction. That is another relation after reaching the body of host. Next, the yeah, end of virulence. End of virulence means uh, those parasites which are not well adapted to survive inside the host body, they uh, they turned as virulence and uh, and also that parasite and the host they both receive properly developed immunity both develop uh, their own immune uh, immune response and because of that mutual development of immune response uh, they start to develop a sort of relationship uh, relationship is that uh, it will not destroy any of the animals. Any of the animals means it makes parasitism a perfect thing inside the host. Okay. These are all uh, the different types of relations relationship we can uh, see uh, whenever a parasite enters inside the body of the host. With this we can finish today's section and class. Thank you. I should fuck her in the best. Yeah.